I think the, the pace of the women's game and how far it's moved and how quickly it's moved is absolutely phenomenal. And I think not many people would have ever envisaged that it could have moved the way that it has done. So you would never imagine seeing that type of crowd for a women's match when I used to go and watch Thunder play uh, Blackpool in the KSL. Just to see the growth of the game, it's a super exciting time. I've been here at Emirates Old Trafford in the indoor school over the winter. The first time ever as a, as a women's team we've been able to have a really good training block here. Today there's huge misogyny in cricket. There's huge casual sexism every single day. I guess it's pretty entrenched. Women's cricket wasn't really on the agenda. Problems in cricket are being dominated by a very sort of small pool of white men, basically. I think it, it's pretty clear there's a huge funding gap. A lot of stakeholders are going to have to really take a few brave decisions to, to get us where we need to get to. As females, we don't want equal pay. We want equal opportunity, and that's what we're getting our lives. Okay. I'm recording. So. Nice. Three, two. The Charlotte Edwards Cup begins on Sunday and it's going to be a very exciting competition. It's a massive competition, you know, especially for our Thunder girls as well. After, you know, a relatively quiet showing in, in the 50 over competition, I think the coaches will be really pinpointing this competition to do something. So the Charlotte Edwards Cup is our T20 domestic competition um, for our regional team. Obviously named after the great Charlotte Edwards, who's strangely a coach in the tournament, so she's playing for her own name. And it's a round-robin competition, and um, so each team plays each other once. And then the top three get through to a, a finals day, where top, top of the group go straight through to a final, and second and third play off in, in a semi-final. I think, in a way, this, this season coming up could be quite pivotal for Thunder. I think they're at a point where they're going to try and show a little bit of something for the investment that's been put in. The pressure's there at the end of the day, you know. We're putting in significant investment from the likes of Hilton and Sports Breaks, and the club are over-investing over and above what the ECB are putting in as a regional programme, and which to a level up more than any other team. I mean, we're, you know, we're trying to develop a professional elite environment. The fact that it is so much more visible, that people know they can make good careers from it now, will engage the, the teenagers and, and even younger women than that to, to really get involved in the sport and, and drive it forward, which is an exciting thing for all of us involved. A lot of teams were looking at us going, wow, they've been on this amazing pre-season tour. What are they going to be like? Emma Lamb on strike. You'll need two or three individuals to step up and you need the team to, to function effectively as a unit. Deandra Dottin tries to sweep, but completely misses and the stumps are rattled. With that investment and with that support comes increasing expectations. Should be a catch here, straight to extra cover. Maybe there's an element of trying to run before you can walk a little bit with it. A big swing here, and this time she does connect. One bounce, and it's gone for four. There's a field underneath, put down. Actually, that motivation going into a new season is always really exciting and can set you up as a group to really start performing. Prendergast will go for the single, shot at the stumps, and miss and Western Storm are home. And a warm welcome from Emirates Old Trafford Thunder team against the Blaze here in the Charlotte Edwards Cup. Kirsty Godin balls down the pitch, comes at leap out oh, and chipped right up towards mid-off and Emma Lamb's gone. What do we think is going wrong? Why aren't we winning these early games, you know? And there wasn't any one thing that we could put our finger on. Ball, and she's looking to ramp that. It could be LBW, it is LBW. 
Trocald has gone, she's gone for 22. Returns for her fourth and final over. And Eccleston chips the ball back over her head, and uh, Kelly takes the catch. But ultimately, when you're playing at an elite level, then that pressure exists, you know, whether, whether the additional funding is there or not. The reality dawns that that is what professional sport is. Overcrossing and balls, that's chipped up towards mid-on. But not fun this day in the second match. And this will be the winning runs. So I think there's an element of you put that support in, you put that investment in, right, start winning games. It just doesn't work like that, does it? The better team, the stronger team across the face will match. Good for you, Scott. OK. Um, well, Paul, what's your, what's your thoughts on today? Um, yeah, it's um, disappointing, obviously, to lose the game. Paul Holton with me on commentary for a bit today, and he said that it looked like a team that's not won all season against a team that's actually played quite well this season. Would that be a fair summary? I think that's fair, yeah. I mean, we, we um, probably lacking a little bit of confidence uh, at this point in time. Yeah, you, you're winless, obviously, so far this season in the Rachel and in, obviously, two matches in the Charlotte Edwards Cup. Um, how disappointing is, is that? There was kind of a lot of optimism coming into this season, I think. Yeah, look, we're disappointed. There's, there's, there's no doubt about that. Um, that's the game, isn't it? And what we've got to do is we've got to keep building belief in the players and, and be ready, work hard and work smart and, and be ready come uh, Saturday. We always joke about Crosby having its own climate as well. Like Every time we come, the weather's nice. First thing on a Sunday morning, it's like so quiet. Like, it's early, but there's like nobody here. The first time we brought Maisie here, she thought the statues were real people, and then I was like, yeah, I said it, Charlie. <laughs> I don't live far from here and grew up playing at Rainford Cricket Club in, in Liverpool Com, um, which is all because of my brother, really. So my brother played both cricket and football, and I did the same um, because of him, really. So um, opportunities-wise, I always just played, played boys and men's stuff, really. Um, yeah, it was, it was brilliant, and Rainford had, had given me all the opportunities that they could and um, played a little bit at school as well. Um, and then obviously like got picked up in the length setup from sort of nine nine onwards. So um, yeah, played played for many years, like coming through the right through the age groups, which was all women's stuff. I'm Ellie Threlkeld, wicketkeeper batter and thunder captain. Oh, Ellie Threlkeld, uh, an amazing skipper, fastest hands in the northwest and in the whole country, I'd say. Uh, so I think behind the sticks uh, as a wicketkeeper, she is a phenomenal talent. You can't look past the skipper Ellie Threlkeld. I think she's been brilliant over the last few years, you know, taking on the reins as skipper is never a, an easy job, especially with a young group like we've got. She's, you know, a formidable individual. She's still so young and she's got such incredible leadership skills. Ellie's great. Ellie is what we're about at Thunder. And it's challenging for her in terms of the pressure of keeping, captaining, batting in top middle order as well. Um, so she's got a lot of pressure on her shoulders as well. Played for Lancashire since the age of nine, I think, so a very long time. I've been part of the Thunder setup for, for three years now when it, when it first was created. Um, one of the first to receive a professional contract in 2020. And yeah, I've been part of the, the setup ever since and um, became captain two years ago. So um, yeah, this is, would be my second season in charge. It's something I've always, always wanted to do. I think I've done it a lot of age group cricket. When we found out Alex Hartley was stepping down, it was not really talked about a lot for a long period of time. And it was sort of um, myself, um, Georgie Boyce, a couple of other players were getting opportunities to, to do the leadership roles on the pitch. And um, it was mentioned to me that, that it might be possible. And I sort of gave it everything from my end and said, I really want to do it. But yeah, I remember the moment Shawsy told me and um, I just couldn't really believe it, to be honest. I think, obviously, I was only 20, 23, and yeah, it's pretty young to, to be able to do it. And I think since then, I've done everything I can to sort of get better and um, to try and impact the group as much as I can. I think a captain in cricket does have a lot of responsibilities. There's decision-making, obviously there's a lot of input from a coaching team beforehand, but on-field decision-making of if the game plan's not going quite how you wanted it, who's coming on to bowl next. You've got a foot in both camps in a way that you're working with the coaches around selection and then you're also part of a team like everyone else. All the support we're getting from Lancashire is absolutely brilliant. Hilton have been, have been amazing and yeah, likewise other sponsors have as well and I, I don't think we'd be able to 
be going on pre-season tours and funding extra professional players um, without their help. But there becomes a point where, yeah, we've got to give back as a team and all, all the support we're getting, it, it's got to translate to results on the pitch. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very well, how are you? I know. The, the, the women's game, um, the growth has been magnificent, really. I think it's been it's been a rapid pace of change, but it's also on a journey where you kind of just know it's still got so much further to go. The game will only get better in quality if women can be given the opportunity to have 12-month contracts, to, to train in the way that the men do, to completely focus on cricket, and, and that. It is the, it's the money, exactly. We needed to do more, we wanted to do more. I think one of the things that we've always been guilty of is wanting to run before everybody else wanted to walk. You know, we can go and drive additional commercial sponsorship, but we need some more from the governing body. The governing body can achieve that if it actually recognises that by going and doing a broadcast deal or getting a big title domestic sponsor for the Charlotte Edwards Cup trophy, that would be game changing because that would fill that gap that would enable the women's pro structure to pay what it needs to pay and do what it needs to do to really compete and grow. I think in terms of where the women's game is right now, I think we're only scratching the surface of the potential actually. Um, and I think it's gonna take a real collaborative effort um, across the whole of the professional game network. So that's all of our partners. So that's whether it's the first class counties, the national counties, commercial partners. Um, it really does have to work together in a cohesive way um, to sort of rise, rise the whole tide. We are, as the ECB, over-investing in the women's game at the moment relative to the direct commercial returns uh, that we create from it. That's partly because we believe it's just the right thing to do, because ultimately where we're trying to get to is a self-sustaining economy where we build the audience, we create the value, we're able to pay players uh, you know, what we'd like to be paying them. Stop treating the domestic game as a performance sport. It is a commercial elite sport. There will be a way of doing that if there's a will. In terms of women's domestic cricket, um, we are very much in our infancy, I guess, in terms of establishing that as a broadcast product. Um, I think it's something that I am optimistic about in the future as to where that will sit. I genuinely have always just wanted what's best for our women's professional squad and what's right for our women's professional squad. You know, it isn't our job to make the life easy for the ECB and others. It's our job to, to be on a journey and do what's right by our women's professional squad. For me, the most important thing about cricket and my love for it came from the friendships that I developed. You know, started playing cricket with Kate Cross at an incredibly young age, at 12 years old, and she's been my ride or die ever since. And, you know, friends that I've made throughout the game have obviously been my rock through my, my darkest times. But, but cricket, cricket for me is just the most incredible sport. For me, nothing in my life will ever beat the 2017 World Cup final at Lords, and, and we won it. And then you almost think, how does it get better than that? that? That's the high. Your dreams have come true. And then you lose your England contract, and you go, who am I? Who have I become? Right, so Alex, we'll start with the intro question, so there are some nice and easy ones for you. So <laughs> first is your name and your role. I'm Alex Hartley, former shit former thunder. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Straight into yeah! the hands of David Wicket, Kate Cross with the catch. Ragadouche, baby. Time for a batting clinic now. Oh, I don't like that one. Alex Hartley, um, World Cup winner, just an absolute uh, firecracker of a player, really good fun. He's other of his sex. Oh no, it's not, it's dead. The moment she came back to training again, it was fantastic. It just brought an energy, a keenness, a directness about her as well. Alex, left arm spinner, enthusiastic player, Absolute cricket nut, loves getting involved in everything cricket. 
Alex Hartley, one of my oldest and longest friends, the heartbeat of many teams and one of the reasons that I fell back in love with the game. I was pulling my hair out, my eyelashes out. I had a breakdown on my mum. Couldn't remember the last time I laughed. Couldn't remember the last time I smiled. And I was coming back from cricket training. I was miserable. I cried every single day um, and had to start therapy because I didn't know what else to do. And I, I really had hit rock bottom of just going back to that dark place that I was in in 2019. Therapy for me got me through the summer of my last summer of playing cricket and I'm really glad I did that, really glad that I got through that because if I'd have retired at the lowest of lows that I was at and in a really dark place, I think I would have hated cricket forever. But through therapy, I got to play another season with the Thunder Girls, I got to play in the 100 and I retired quite proud of, of what I've achieved in my life beautiful day here at Emirates Old Trafford and we are starting of course with the thunder against the sunrisers. Delighted to say that I'm joined by Lancashire's Sophie Eccleston. Great to have you with us. As you say it's not quite gone according to plan so far but have you been able to really sort of put your finger on, on where things are going wrong for you? I think we just need to be a bit clearer on bowling plans man. I think we just ball a bit straighter. I think we've been a bit wayward of our lines recently. Get a few, have someone like Lammy to go big today and get some, get some runs on the board. Uh, Ellie thanks very much for, for speaking to us. Uh, you've just had the toss. Uh, what's the verdict? Uh, we're going to have a ball today. Um, yeah, lost the toss, so we're in the field. Hey, girls. All I ask is we sit here after the innings, we've given everything, OK? Energy for 20 on this, do the basics really well, all straight. Come on. After the tough start, I had concern, definitely. You know, I've kind of staked my, my team's name. I'm really supporting and getting behind this group. The consequence of people not performing is, you know, those opportunities aren't there anymore. I think there was pressure, maybe that played a part. Kate Cross to bowl the first. Cross strikes, wicket with the second ball of the match. But I know we are good enough, but we're just not showing it on the pitch. There's uh, oh. Cross bowls. Yeah. She cleared uh, extra cover, Lamb running backwards. Norris coming into the attack. Villiers sliced away and caught. Second wicket to fall, 28 for two. That's gone high, more height than distance, I reckon. Should be gone, is gone. Straight to DeAndre Dotted. Gardner, the new batter, there's Lamb in and balls. That's driven, driven for four. Two balls left. Oh, and balls! This is excellent by Titani. Really good couple of overs at the death here for Thunder. And that will be, I think, a really, really happy Thunder dressing room. It's all about the batters now. Job done. That game really felt like it was the first time that everything was coming together. We bowled really well, and you could see the confidence of the girls was through the roof as well. And it felt like if we could nail the second innings, then we were really onto something. There was pressure there, but the team went in believing you you really backed us you know the team walked out and you thought yeah we, we can we can do this so here we go liberty heap and emma lamb heading out to bat a lot of pressure on emma lamb if she can get off to a good start cop back to open up the bowling from the, the jimmy anderson end it's flashed away to mid wicket nicely played by emma lamb well it's a ferocious looking shot this to me to be a, a marked improvement in the running between the wickets. Oh, that's a skyer. Could be caught. Probably should be caught. Oh no, put down. 49 without loss. A run away from a 50 partnership for the first wicket between Emma Lamb and Liberty Heap. And drives down the ground, and that's going to bring up a half century partnership. Kelly Castle coming into the attack. Lamb looks to sweep, and she's gone. LBW, big blow. First wicket to fall. That's the first breakthrough for the Sunrisers. Emma Lamb out. Side in the air, caught. 
out, out, and that is the end of Morris. She's gone for seven. for 46. Frustration for Liberty Heat. Fine effort with the bat. Dotting comes down the pitch. It's another monster hit for six. For Deandra Dotting. Just need two more to win. Yeah, here she comes down the pitch. Heaved away into the onside. They're up and running. Their first victory of the season. They've beaten the Sunrisers here at Emirates Soul Trafford. Happy captain. Happy captain. Girls, I just want to say I'm really proud of us. I think we talked about creating our own energy and I thought that's the best I've seen us out there. I thought the bowlers were outstanding. And I think to turn around what we've we've done to that today, it's a great effort. Um, and sitting in our it feels good, doesn't it? So I think hang on to that and, and we go again for the next one. The defeat the other day that we've got to stick together, and that's what you did. It was absolutely brilliant. You, were, I would have thought you'd won every game you played so far. So, fucking well done. You deserve this. You deserve it. It means so much. It means so much. It means so much to me, the staff, and everyone in here. So, cheers to you all. Thanks. Let's have many, many more beers that taste like this. Well done. <laughs> I think still when people think of cricket in this country, they think of the men's game. We're still working to get, that, get the women's game up to that, to that level in the public consciousness. The men's game has too much cricket at the moment. We all know the schedule is congested and it impacts performance. The women's game is entirely different. The women's game is in a different phase and it's hungry. It needs as much cricket as possible. Women have been put on small club grounds with not great facilities. They, that we're obviously a long way off gender pay parity. And that has to be the ambition, that women's cricket can bring in enough revenue and stand on its own two feet that, that women can get paid what they're worth. And I will always fight for the cricket girls. You know, I, I want them to be paid more. I think they should be paid more. You shouldn't have people having to live with friends just so they can try and save money for a house. I think they should be paid enough to be able to save money. In terms of equal pay, the ambition is, is obvious. We, we, we want to end up there. Things like the 100 and domestic cricket, 100 is that both teams are doing exactly the same thing. They're playing a 100 ball match. The sponsors are massively interested in the women's game. We've got to close that gap. We absolutely want to get to a position where salaries for male and female cricketers are equal. You know, we could put all of that investment in salaries. That might give you equal pay. But what that wouldn't make is equal pay a sustainable from a system that you've built, it would just be something that you've chosen to prioritise at that moment in time. Funding is always going to talk, money always talks, but if you have these investments from organisations, you know, such as Hilton, such as Sports Breaks, then it does mean that you can just do that bit more and every 1%, 2%, 3% is going to help develop a side and give them that sort of confidence and the ability to go forth and be the best team they can be. We are in catch-up mode, so I think it's unrealistic to say, right, we're going to equalise everything tomorrow just like that. There are things that need to be built in, um, and there's changes both in terms of, um, there are procedural things that we need to change as well around that. So it's, it's investment, it's mindset, it's culture. But look, I think fundamentally, the biggest thing within all of this is leadership. We need strong leaders in the game at every level, um, both at ECB and um, within our regions, within our first class counties, within our national counties, that believe in presenting men and women, boys and girls, and with equal opportunities moving forwards. We're, we're possibly getting closer to it than we would have been a couple of years ago. I think it's, it's a conversation that is in the public domain certainly more than it, than it ever was. A lot of stakeholders are going to have to really take a few brave decisions to, to get us where we need to get to. When I wasn't at school or playing netball or doing any other activity, I was always down here playing. I'm Kate Cross and I'm a Thunder Bowler.
Do you see yourself as a trailblazer? Um, no, yes, but no, it's not. You know, you don't sign up to... I wasn't playing cricket down yeah. here to be a trailblazer. I think, naturally, just the way that my journey has been, it's had to be that way. Kate Cross, uh, England bowler. Really smart and uh, engaging and a great follow on uh, social media. And she has a podcast with Alex Hartley, which is essential listening for a cricket fan, I'd say. Kate, um, opening bowler, definitely getting up there in the batting stakes. Real leader on the field um, and off the field and has broken down a lot of boundaries. She's got a very good impact on the players. They, they can see her professionalism and that's probably the word I'd use a lot is her professionalism. But she definitely has been a role model, I think, and, and future players have followed and, and, and in the main, the vast majority have gone on to, to be international players. Kate, it's Lancashire Thunder's first training session today. How excited are you to get started? Oh, massively excited. Um, I, I always get a real buzz when I come through the gates at Old Trafford and I think it's making it very real now. It's really nice to be here and I'm looking forward to get going now. Kate and the whole Cross family are, are fundamental to Haywood Cricket Club. I'd actually finished playing for the first team when Kate made her debut, but was at the ground when she did it. And, you know, I think the whole club is just proud of what Kate's done, she's a great role model for the club. You know, there's a lot more uh, females and girls wanting to play cricket at Haywood and in the surrounding clubs just because of Kate and what she's achieved. I, th I think Kate paints or embodies that vision of women's cricket, how it's how it's moved on from those real amateur days of how you have to fight and earn your place in, a, in an academy and then England. Her journey now would be easier, and that's a brilliant thing, and I think the legacy of someone like a Kate is that these changes come in, so nowadays they'd be coming into a county age group set up at Lancashire, set up into our, one of our emerging player programmes, and then into the academy, and then into the funder setup. Kate was a 15-year-old girl bowling in the nets, and this coach said, uh, Stanley, just come and have a look at this girl. And I went there with, um, without any uh, sort of preconceived ideas, went and looked at a bowl over the balcony, and straight away I could tell that there was a player there of, of, of some real quality. Uh, she had this just late swing and delivered the ball in such a way that was really quite a powerful indication of, uh, of her future potential. So I made up my mind there and then that she would be part of the academy and I've had no regrets. My only regret is that I was just so blinkered. Yeah, I mean, there was always comments. There was, it was just such an easy thing for people to talk about. I wasn't put off by it, and I know that some girls could be and have been. Um, and I think that's what is so brilliant about the stage that we're in at the minute with the women's game. I think the fact that there's now a real pathway for girls, a lot more um, women's cricket clubs as well, or, or cricket clubs that have women's teams as part of it, I think that's really powerful that girls know that there's a definitive pathway to make it to Lancashire or to Thunder, and, but which I, I was just playing cricket. I just wanted to play as much as possible and the opportunities kind of fell at my feet without me really realising that it would be kind of life-changing. So success for Thunder. So there'll be a great sense of relief, I'm sure, amongst the Thunder players. That will be a much happier dressing room now. That first win, I, I just remember being so happy and relieved that we'd, we'd got that under our belt. People talk so much about how important momentum is in cricket and I knew that this would be brilliant for, for us to, to then kick on and, and hopefully go further. From where we'd come from, with confidence felt really low, you just didn't know where, where a win was going to come from. I think it was belief more than anything. I think once you get that first win or you have that performance personally, that can change the whole dynamic of the group. We want them to be as successful as they can be, we, we're on this journey with them because we want them to realise their full potential. The whole development has been brilliant for us to watch from the sidelines and you know, support as best we can. That's the kind of game and, and performance and result that can just really turn things around. Welcome along, looking forward to this. So here we go. Liberty Heat on strike. That's in the air and she gets one. And that is 50 for Emma Lamb. Bang, have a bit of that, Deandra Dotted. This should be a run out, and it is. And caught. Like in any sport, if you can find a way to win, it just improves everyone's mood 
and all of a sudden, potentially, you see a little bit of confidence rise, you see a little bit of belief come back into the players. The first wicket of the Thunder innings. The wicket that's much needed now, they might get it here, it's gone high in the air, and it has been taken. It's four more to the total. Roll away for four runs, just bouncing up over the rope. This is where we are in the hard world of professional elite sport. There are no hiding places. It does matter. This is very important to everybody at the club. If they can get a good win here, they can go past the Vikings. Four runs, perfect start for the Thunder. A ramp shot. That goes away for four runs. Strong contributions with the bat from the Thunder. What can they produce with the ball? Brilliant from Trail Pal. Bold off stump. Olivia Bell. Another crucial wicket for Thunder. Take back out of what a catch that is from Tara Norris. Something special could happen here because just a little bit of momentum, a few wins put together, and you start to think, you know what, maybe, maybe they could actually go on and reach, reach finals day. So here we go, we're at Blackpool Cricket Club. It's a do or die in the Charlotte Edwards Cup for Thunder. Need a victory here against the Diamonds to reach finals day. Keep it really, really simple. Enjoy the moments, enjoy the pressure. When the pressure gets hot on them or us, enjoy both teams going through it and learn in the moment. Okay? Make smart decisions and keep it simple. Good luck. Go well. Can I have a quick word did there, Ellie? Yeah, yeah, lost the toss and um, yeah, we're going to have a ball. Equation is simple, isn't it? You've got to win here and ideally you've got to win well this afternoon. I'm actually really proud of the girls, the way they've turned the comp around. I think losing the first two and then to, to be in this position today, like, and we've got a bit of momentum now, so hopefully that'll help us out today. Must win game, but every game's been a must win game, okay? Nothing changes. These are the days where we do all that hard work and that indoor centre for, okay? Smile, enjoy it, relax, do the basics well, yeah? Start fast, give everything for 20 overs, all right? Thunder are going to bowl first, and here we go with a slipping place. If they win the match, they give themselves a chance of reaching Saturday's final. Strike rate of 122. Early breakthroughs for the Thunder could be important with that in mind. It's just glanced away off the, the, the pads out towards mid wicket. Thompson waits, drives up towards mid on and caught. It's driven and caught. Second wicket in the over for Tara Norris. He could go up to bowl the third off. Gets another wicket. Heath has gone. Morris strikes. Oh, it's a beauty from Bell. It's down towards long arm. It is out. Tatani takes the catch. Takes batter out. And she's going for another big hit. Plenty of height. Not much distance. Might be caught. Is. Fantastic with the ball, Lancashire. Terrific work, wasn't it, Ellie? You must be absolutely delighted with that. Yeah, I'm really pleased. Um, I think the bowlers were outstanding. Um, kept the stumps in play for as long as possible, and um, yeah, got through their top order. And um, but yeah, half a job's done. We just got to do the second half even better now. They're going to need a little bit of luck in this afternoon in, in, in making sure that they chase this down. Now, there's a bonus point up for grabs. Yeah, we'll know that they'll have to win it inside the certain number of, of overs left, and and if they can do that then Saturday becomes a fantastic afternoon for them. So here we go. So they've got 97 to get inside 16 overs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ball's hit firmly away. He comes down the pitch, hammers the ball away. Could be caught, is. Sophie Morris takes guard from the uh, umpire. It's a good looking shot. Driven and it's been caught. It's gone 
behind square, and it's four runs. Dot in weights, Levick in balls. Oh, the stumping chance, she's gone, she has been stumped. Threlke the skipper. Levick balls. Threlke waiting. Levick in. Can't find a run here. That's scores level, so just one more run now for Thunder. Run away behind square by Threlkeld. Thunder win the game. They do it inside. 16 overs to get themselves that precious extra point as well. Job done for Thunder. Lovely, actually. But the Thunder skipper, Ellie Threlkeld, is there to hit the winning runs. Everyone in. Grab your attention for a minute or so. Um, that's absolutely fantastic. What a performance that is here. They've got their, all their top players. We didn't have our England players. But that performance is absolutely outstanding. The power play, the job we did in the power play, brilliant. The way we field in, the catches we took. But how we calmly went around the run chase and played as well as we did is fantastic. But before I finish and hand over to Ellie, I want us to remember how it felt when we lost those first two games. Because the character that you've shown, the environment that you've created, the sticking together from everybody, has enabled us to perform like that and come out like that. That's absolutely fantastic. But we must remember that. Because those moments make us much, much stronger. The character, the determination and the fight, and then the quality has come out in the last four or five games. Absolutely outstanding. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> Girls, I'm fucking proud of us. I think if you'd have, we'd have been sat here, if you said we'd have been sat here a few weeks ago, no one would have believed it, would they? So I think, like Shorty said, it's testament to the people in this room and sticking together. And look, we're going to the finals day, and I think now let's take what we've done today into that. There's so many positives to come out from today. I think the bowlers were outstanding. Meeks at top, Tara, brilliant. I think Liv um, and Soph to come in and play under a pressure game like that. Like, and to execute your skills like that was fantastic and it's brilliant to see. Um, and then I think sometimes when you're chasing a low total, it's easy to go out there and just try and knock it around. I think the way we approach that batting innings is exactly what we want. I thought um, Dats, Fee in particular, you're outstanding today. Um, and yeah, let's keep doing what we're doing and uh, we'll come on with the trophy. A real, a real highlight, I think, for both myself, all the staff, all the players. Fee Morris is a signing, how she's developed and then excelled in these games. Olivia Bell come through the academy and just taken straight into, into the system and performing admirably well. But it, it was just looking at the squad of like, we can do it. So I think it, it was really, really good thinking, right, this is your reward now. You've worked hard all winter, you've performed in these games, you've got finals days to look forward to. I remember talking to people on social media, talking to my friends who are also Thunder fans. Everybody was buzzing about that. I think it, it just goes to show that, you know, when, when people really put their mind to investing in something, then you really can make environments shift. And I actually think Thunder have really paved the way with how professionalism looks in the UK for women's cricket. It's an absolutely, a, it's a legitimate career path. and. That wasn't the case even a, even a few years ago. I have a daughter, she's five, she's just started playing All-Stars. The fact that I know that she has the same opportunity as the little boys that she's playing with one day um, is hugely important. I'm very um, proud and privileged to have the chance to change the future of, for women and inspire a generation of girls. The reason for us supporting the women is because we felt compelled to and we want to make sure that the women have the same opportunities as the men. Young girls, now understand that cricket is a, is a game that can provide them with a proper career. We're talking hundreds of girls, more than 100 girls right now, but hundreds in the future, in the country, at any one time, can earn a living from, from, from professional cricket, just as they can in the men's game. I started playing when I was about five or six, Stockport Georgians, and so just went down on Friday, just gave it a go, and like I thought it was great, I loved it, and sort of ever since I've played there, and like club cricket, so when I was about five, and, and that's how it went. 
worked for me. When I was 12 or 13, I joined the, the Cheshire setup. That pathway had sort of merged with Lancashire and, and became um, the North West Thunder. That was very good, like very beneficial to me. I think, you know, there's pictures of me from five, six years ago with like a Lauren Winfield Hill or like a Kate Cross at, at a game. And I would have been like, you know, these are the best in the game. Like these are the players that we all aspire to be. And I think how actually in the last couple of years, like it's so much more doable. But definitely watching those players like growing up and stuff like, it almost felt a little bit like the other trailblazers. Like it's great. Like now it's absolutely great. To, to be where I am now is something I would never expected. And, and, and it's only something that seemed doable since joining the ranks. I think that's been, you know, credit to them for a lot of it. So, name Olivia Bell, and my role is a spinner. Liv, feisty character, um, off spin bowler, right handed batter, really gets stuck in in the field and has progressed the cricket unbelievably in the last 12 to 18 months. Liv Bell's been fantastic, real breath of fresh air. You never quite expect a, a teenager to come in in their debut season and have the impact she did. Through Liv Bell, what an absolute superstar she's been. For her to come in and, and step up as such, such a youngster, you know, just shows the depth and strength that we have in our squad. For me, I don't think the career element came until about 18 or 19, so only about a year or two ago. I definitely feel lucky. I think for me, like, the career path has been simply easier than an Ellie or a Kate in terms of having that much cricket on with that high standard and backing behind us. I think that's something they didn't get. It's clear that we have very good support here, the best in the circuit potentially, and I think that's something that can never be taken away from Hilton and from Lanx. And the way that they've supported us has been beyond what any other region is, is capable of. I'd hope people can see what I've done and see the support that I've had and I think, if anything, it's just shown that there is a path, like there is a career. You can go from playing under 13s minor county to be a professional cricketer in, in less than seven, eight years. For me, there's nothing better than being able to show that that's possible and, and have as many girls try and follow and do the same thing and hopefully, you know, overtake me and do better. Firstly, I think the belief that we can get there now will, will be there and I think that's something we've never had before. Now that tournament in, and that trophy's there for the taking and anyone can go and win it and I think we've got to use sort of that disappointment in that finals day to, to fuel our training for the winter and um, to, fuel, to fuel our motivation to go, to go and do one better next year. I think the 2023 season said it was just a, a huge part of what the, this journey is for Thunder and the belief in the group now to know that Thunder could be the, the team next year. There is a broader network involved in this. There's a support group that surrounds the players, uh, there's people at the club, there's the, there's the sponsors, there's the players. So that would have been a very special day to have got to, to New Road, to have played in that finals day would have been great and, and fingers crossed it more. We've, we've supported the team for a long time. The fact that they're getting to finals day, semi-final, big showcase uh, matches is, is fantastic for us to see. You know, the, the first time you're in a final, I think they'll always remember that. They'll remember that feeling. And that feeling is something that you can kind of take with you and put it into future appearances, um, future campaigns as well. Girls are going to be confident next year going into the Charlotte Edwards Cup. What an experience like that does is it starts to build your, your inner belief system. The fact that the team have now got to a, a playoff and know that they're capable of doing that, that should, that should 
give them a lot more confidence going into this next season. We, we couldn't be proud, I mean, it was an, an, an incredible achievement for them to make finals day and to be part of that journey and to you know, have play some role in that, we were extremely proud to, um, to see that happen. We're, we are this year, 2024, at an inflection point where things are going to change, for their, things are being handed back to the counties and therefore more is going to be asked of them. But every county should sit up and realise that there's an opportunity there uh, and, and one to grasp. It's so exciting where the women's game is. People are excited by cricket, not just men's cricket, women's cricket. It's that as a whole. There are so many exciting landmark things coming in the future for the women's game that it's a very exciting time to be involved in it. It's been great to see so many young players have come through the academy system in the first team this summer. You look at your Mahika Gores, who made their debut in April, and just a few months later, making a debut for England against Sri Lanka. Seeing what great strides have been made already in, and I still say, a pretty short period of time, to, to where we are now from where we were just a few years ago is, 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 is a huge improvement. Genuinely, I think for women's cricket, the sky is the limit. We have seen a lot of progress in terms of women's sport, and I think, you know, absolutely cricket can get there. We've got some way to go, but we're making significant steps. You know, particularly in, in cricket, it just seems to have evolved so quickly. It's quite tangible, you can feel it. It's, there's a hell of a lot of momentum behind women's sport. It will be fascinating to, when we put out broadcast rights to the market, just to see kind of where we're at and, and how much they're worth. Uh, and I think we'll be probably be surprised at worth more than we think. I think where we are now, I think the landscape has shifted. I am impatient and I want to move as quickly as possible as I'm sure the, the whole game does, um, but it's just making sure that we've got the right strategy at the right time, that we're up and running and now's the time to fly. And I think the key thing for me is that the ECB take the Charlotte Edwards Cup seriously commercially for the first time and get behind it, get a broadcast partner, get a standalone domestic partner and then challenge the clubs to go out and drive significant commercial sponsorship. Across sponsorship, across media, what we're, what we're navigating towards is a world where we've created you know, sort of sufficient value in women's cricket for it to be self-sustaining. I think the next five years is going to be a defining moment in the future of, of women's cricket. The direction that we're moving in is fast, it's positive. You know, if anything, we all need to be a little bit more restless, actually, um, because this is a massive opportunity and um, the time is now, but it means that we need to put our foot down. The squad are really excited with Chris Reed's appointment. High quality individual, high quality ex-international player. And I think he'll bring something different. He's got to move this team from being every love thunder to this team has a hard edge and can win. The expectation on Chris is we want trophies. We're taking Thunder out on pre-season tour to India and Dubai, which will be the third time we've taken our women out on pre-season tour with our men. And with additional on top Hilton funding for 2024, we are the only squad that has 15 full-time pros. That gives us a full winter with a full professional squad. And we're really excited about what's to come.